How many of you believe anger is wrong? Wrong. Wrong. You should not experience anger. How many of you, in your heart, you, that's what you feel, really? How many of you are really worried about how it's going to affect everyone around you if you're angry? Okay. How many of you feel that from God's perspective it's got to be wrong? How many of you feel that anger um, is a terrible feeling inside of you and you'd like to avoid it at all costs? Okay. On the divine path, you choose to not avoid any emotion at all. You choose to experience every emotion, which includes rage and anger and other emotions. Does that make sense? Now, our choice to avoid it is based on fears. It's based on different things that we're afraid of inside of ourselves, right? And so, so not acting upon your anger when you feel angry is already in another emotional injury. Can you see that? Yeah. It's already an injury of judgment of the anger. Or judgment, if, you, if you're not acting upon your jealousy, judgment of your jealousy. If you're not acting upon your envy, judgment of your, en of your envy. Now when I say acting upon it, I don't mean go and project it at the person, because that, that is certainly not taking responsibility for it. I mean feeling it, and actually feeling it inside of yourself, and expressing and experiencing it inside of yourself. Do you follow me? When you go and ex express it to the person, you are not only now damaging them, but you're damaging yourself even further because you are not taking responsibility for the underlying emotion that generated the anger. Do you follow me? So, in every case you need to experience the emotion that is there. So with anger, I allow myself to experience it without judgement. So I get out my <laughs> baseball bat, right, and I get out my boxing bag and away I go. Like, and because I allow the full expression of it, within 30 to 60 seconds, I'm on the floor crying generally. Because that's what it was covering, wasn't it? Yes. Remember the anger yes. or the rage is covering the feeling underneath of powerless and weakness and all those other feelings that I don't want to experience. Right? So by just expressing it, I am connecting. Now, if you try expressing it and it just dissipates, that's because you have a blockage. And the blockage is, I'm not allowed to be angry. It's not spiritual to be angry. God wouldn't want me to be angry. I'm going to hurt someone when I'm angry. And it could be a list of a hundred different things about your anger. Do you follow me? When you deal with that emotional condition, which is actually an error, you'll realise you're allowed to experience your anger, but you just need to do it appropriately, which means own it, feel it, experience and express it, and connect to what's underneath it in that one process. Sometimes you use the phrase angry with mother, father, God, whatever. Uh, it sounds like the other person's the cause of it. They could be or might not be. When if you get 30 people in a room and they're all angry, and they're all angry for different, they think different reasons, mm -hmm. aren't they all experiencing the same emotion? Yes, but it's very important who you're experiencing it with. I mean, who you're projecting it at. Yeah, yeah. So here's God. Here's you. Let's say you're angry, but in this particular case, with God. Aren't you just experiencing anger and projecting on God? Isn't it just anger? Um, God didn't cause it, did he? Yeah, see, now what you're trying to do is skip over again. You're trying to skip over. No, I'm not. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I don't see... You're getting all intellectual about my wording instead of listening to what's going on at the emotional level. But and this is the danger that you have, Grant, is that yeah. of, you'd like to get... You know, you'd like to understand it intellectually before you do it emotionally. Yes, but... The trigger isn't important, is it? The trigger is very important. It why? tells you everything. But why, why? How does it help you experience the emotion? Because the emotion is about the trigger. Yeah, That's like not according to my understanding. I know. It's like the catalyst. Sorry? The nature of the trigger is helping you identify what you're experiencing. Sorry? But isn't yeah. the source just the way I've been conditioned? No, but see, we can justify it all sorts of ways, Grant. The truth is that, let's say I am directing anger at God. Anger is always a cover of other emotions, right? Yes. 
So the anger is, I am actually in grief with God. Yes. I, there's something between me and God going on. It's not just anger, it's anger with God, so there's something between me and God. If it's, not, if it's anger with, like, Joe Blow, there's something between me and Joe Blow. So you're saying it's in relationship always with some, something or someone? Yeah, it's usually not, like, how many of your events that you are angry about actually did not include anybody else other than yourself? Can you think of any? You might think of one or two in your life. But it's very rare, right? Why? Because almost every single thing that's happened to you happened in an event with an interaction with another person, has it not? Yeah. Right? And that tells you so much about yourself and your emotion and what's going on inside of you. And you can intellectualize that it's just anger, but it's not just anger. You're not saying, oh, if I just feel anger, you may have anger with 25 different people in your heart. And I can guarantee to you, if you just feel anger, you are, you are going to have to go through the anger with 25 different people at some point. I'm not trying to get off the subject, AJ, but what about when you're working on something and you get angry? And it's somehow between you and what you're working on. I, I had that. I was a computer it consultant. The, it could be someone, it could be the, the work pressure around or whatever, the expectation of the end result. That, so it's always related to people and how they're going to think about you or people and what they've done in the past with you. or Yeah, always related to something else. Yeah. And can I just go back to this because it's really important, mm -hmm. right? Because I'm interested in... We've been conditioned to not be responsible for emotions. I agree totally. So to me, identifying too much with the trigger has a tendency to project. Ah, but I'm not saying to identify with the trigger. I'm saying to be aware where it all begins. So I've got, I've got people here, here's me, I've got people all around me, right? So I've got, you know, people in the spirit world, I've got God, I've got interactions with other people on earth, yeah. right? In every one of these interactions that I'm having with them, I may have different feelings, mm -hmm. right? Each one of those feelings prevents me from connecting with God because they're all feelings of error. Now, when I say I am angry with God, it's just a statement of fact that I am in a state of blame with God. Right. Right? Now, I know it's wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Do you follow me? Yeah. How many of you know, you know, like, what's God done to you? A lot of people would say everything, and a lot of people would say nothing. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But whatever the reason is that we will have feelings directed towards these people, entities, let's call them, right? Mm -hmm. Whether it's God, people in the spirit world, or people, our friends here on earth, or whatever. And what we're actually doing is that we, we can do two things with that. We can intellectualize it into, I'm just angry. Or, we can focus on what we're angry with and let us go down that road, because that's where our grief is. Or, we could just experience the anger and let it take us to our grief. No, but it won't, most probably. Why? Because we're not directing it, it won't build to the point that we're actually connecting generally. It's not, well, no, it's not personal. And the truth is that every emotion in you is personal. Every emotion inside of you is personal. You know, like for yourself at the moment, there's lots of rage towards your father. You don't want to feel or experience that rage, right? So what you do is you just tell yourself, I'm angry. If I just deal with the anger, everything will be gone. But it's actually anger with dad. And it's actually there's this feeling of not wanting to take responsibility for that for the grief within you that causes you to project the anger with dad but if you go down the track of feeling the anger with dad but instead of yelling and screaming at dad who's part, maybe passed or is still on earth but doesn't really matter instead of yelling and screaming at him get out the you know bag or whatever and just connect with that anger but specifically direct it in that direction right in the sense of feeling it inside of yourself that it's all to do with that thing and then just allow yourself to really experience it and what will happen is you will then connect with the grief that's driving the that the, there was a, there's a lot of things driving the anger there's the anger and then there's the denial which you'll connect to next and then there's the grief that's underneath the anger right so what you'll do is you'll step down into those positions as you do that now if you just stay in this, as the saying goes in a new age term, you will not get down and down and down and down. 
you will actually just stay in it. And your body will tell you that you're not getting there. Your body will express to you and your law of attraction will express to you that you're not getting there. So, you know, when, it, when you're dealing with an emotion and you really deal with it, your law of attraction changes. <coughs> Instantly. Right? Instantly. AJ, could you explain the effect of that anger when you've got the uh, baseball bat and you're hitting the punching bag? Does that, does that punching bag represent the person that you're angry with and what's the effect of that on them? Yes. Um, rather than just if you were angry and thought towards them. Yeah. And um, the first step of, of your anger is denial of your anger. In that condition, you are projecting, unknown to you, and you are projecting the maximum amount of your anger to the other person. So when you deny your anger completely, you are actually projecting the most biggest amount of anger that you could experience is actually going to that person. Does that make sense yeah. to you? Yeah. When you're in denial completely. Because everything you deny completely within yourself isn't passing through you, it's passing out of you. It's coming out of you. And it's going out to the universe, right? So when it's not passing through you, it is going out of you to the universe, just getting expressed to the, to the people that you're angry with. So in denial of your anger, you are actually in the worst possible position from God's perspective. You are actually in a state where every single person around you is feeling what you should be feeling. You follow me? Does that make sense to everyone? Now, the next step is I start experiencing my anger and owning it. As soon as I drop into that state, now those people are receiving less of my anger because I am now starting to experience some of it. Does that make sense to you? Even if you're directly expressing that anger to, to that them. person and hitting them with the baseball bat. Oh, no, you've got to be very careful about that. Yeah. Yeah. You are now at least owning some of that within yourself. You, that is actually a better place. And I'm not saying hitting a person is a better place because that's a, you're doing a lot of bad things there, like to your own soul and to them. But, but actually beating the baseball bat, and even if you're laying and screaming and saying, F from whoever he is, you know, <laughs> and you're doing that, that is actually a better place for you. You are actually projecting less at that moment than you were when you are in total denial. Right. Can I just keep going with this explanation? The next step down from that is realizing that the whole reason why I'm angry with this person is in fact because there's a heap of grief or sadness or fear that's underneath it that I do not want to own. And while I'm in that state, all of this grief and fear is being projected out to everyone. When I step down into my grief, now I'm owning my grief and feeling my grief. Now there is hardly anything going out to anyone. Does that make sense? Yeah. And you get to the point where now, deeper than that, you'll find some unworthiness. And when you're experiencing that, now there's hardly a single drop of it going out to the universe. You are now in full responsibility mode, feeling all of your emotions, and so therefore you are now no longer projecting it out to the universe. Does that make sense to everyone? That it's important that, see, it's important that you get to see that this state is better than this state. Many of you think that's not true. But from God's perspective, that's true. This state is better than this state. This state, you, God can't do anything with you in that state. Can you see why? Because you're totally shut down from all emotion. God can't do anything with you. What's love? Love's an emotion. How is love going to enter you if you've shut down all of your emotion? It's not going to, is it? Now, as soon as you get out of that state into an emotional state, even if it is anger, you are now in a far better position, particularly if you talk to God about it. You are now in a far better position there than you were there, and everyone around you is in a better position there than they were there. And then when you step down even further into the denial of the grief and you realise that you've got a lot of blocks there, now you're even in a better space because you're not projecting the anger anymore, which means you're now taking more self-responsibility. Can you see it's a gradual step down and a gradual reduction of what you're sending out to the universe? Can you see that? Yeah. That's what's actually happening. So you are coming down from this state of total denial 
into this state of total acceptance of everything with inside you and as you drop down into each level you are actually projecting less damage to the universe less damage to your father or your mother or to you know whatever you know whoever it is that you've got these issues with but if you're not honest you'll never get there 